Hello, this is Mighty Owl. Ooh, fun. Chen and Mia are playing a really cool game. Well, let's join them and practice working with decimals. All right, here's the game. They toss a coin on a number line and find the decimal to the nearest thousandths place. All right, Mia just took her turn and let's take a look. Can you find a number that is represented by the dot? Well, we know that the number is between 100th and 200. Well, let's zoom in on the number line to get a closer look. Now we can see that the number is between 125 and 126. I think we're going to need to use decimals to get a more exact answer. Do you see all the lines in between 125 and 126? Each of those represent a tenth. So it looks like this number is between 7 tenths and 8 tenths. Well, let's zoom again and we can better see the next place value, the hundredths. The marks in between 125.7 and 125.8 represent hundredths. And the dot is between three hundredths and four hundredths. Let's zoom in again and see thousandths. Okay, so now we're looking in between 125.73 and 125.74, and the number is at the six thousandths mark. Aha! Uh -huh. We found the number. 125 and 736 thousandths. Cool. When we read a number that contains a decimal point, the point is read as and. Moving on. Here, Mia has written down the number 125 and 736 thousandths in its expanded form. Expanded form? Well, that breaks apart the value of each digit in the number. Right. The portion to the left of the decimal point looks familiar. There's 100, 2 tens, and 5 ones. But the numbers to the right of the decimal point look a little different, though. The 7 times 1 tenth represents 7 tenths. We can write a tenth as a fraction and use multiplication to show that there are 7. And next we have 3 times 1 hundredth to show the value of 3 hundredths. Last we have 6 thousandths or 6 times 1 thousandth. Perfect. Look at that. Putting it all together, we've written it down in decimal form. And now that we helped Mia write a number in decimal form, we can give Chen a hand too. Chen has a number that is written in expanded form and wants to write it as a decimal. So let's take a look together at what each digit is being multiplied by and find out what place value it is. The 3 is being multiplied by 100, and this means that it goes into the hundreds place. 7 is being multiplied by 1, so that goes into the ones place. 8 is being multiplied by 1 tenth, so it goes into the tenths place. And the last digit, 5, is being multiplied by 1 thousandths, so it goes into the thousandths place. Oh, wait a minute. Our place value table has blanks in it. Oh, I know. We can use zeros as placeholders. Oh, right. There we go. Now we can write the number. Okay, we have the number 307 and 805 thousandths. Great job. Ooh, and it's Eric and Latifah. Seems like they're having a little dispute about decimals and fractions. Looks like they may need our help. Now, Eric wrote the following decimal, and Latifah wrote the following fraction. Did Eric and Latifah write the same number? Latifah says that they wrote the same number, four thousandths, but in different forms. Eric doesn't seem to agree. He says that his number is four hundredths and Latifah's is four thousandths. Well, who's right? Both Eric and Latifah say that Latifah wrote four thousandths. And since there is a four in the numerator and one thousandth in the denominator, Latifah's number is correct. And now let's take a look at Eric's number. If we place the number in a place value table, we can see that the four is in the thousandth place, not in the hundredth place as Eric thought. So Latifah is correct and both numbers are four thousandths. Doing great work with these mighty decimals. Now let's continue on and help out Jenny. Whoa, look at all these blocks. Given that the cube represents one whole, Jenny needs to write out this amount in words, digits, and expanded form. Hmm, let's organize these blocks and find out what place value each of them holds. The cubes represent ones. 
These squares would represent a smaller value of tenths because it would take 10 of them to make up a cube. These long rectangles would then be hundredths since 10 rectangles make up a square. And lastly, we have these small cubes, which would be thousandths. And we can see that there are 10 small cubes in a rectangle. All right, and now we can place the numbers into the correct places. There are three cubes, and so three goes into the ones place, and there are four squares, so there are four tenths. And moving on to the rectangles, eight rectangles equals eight hundredths. And finally, we have our small cubes. And there are two small cubes, and that means that there are two thousandths. And now we've written the number in digit form. Now let's read the number so that we can write it out in words. Three and 482 thousandths. Excellent. And next up, we gotta write it in expanded form. Well, there are three ones, so three times one. All right, next is four tenths, so four times the fraction, one tenth then eight hundredths, so eight times one hundredth, and lastly, two thousandths is two times one thousandth. And lastly, we can add all the values together to get the entire amount. Neat. Wow, there are so many cool ways to write mighty numbers, from expanded form to digital form and even with words. Today, we learned how to write decimals in expanded form using fractions. Keep practicing and check out the worksheets on our website. And I'll see you in the next video lesson.